Hello. My name is Shelley Ortiz. And, oh, wrong page. I, I was just teasing. I knew I wasn't Shelley Ortiz. Uh, everybody give Shelley a big round of applause for the great work. Thank you so much. Thanks, for, thanks not only for the introduction, but for the beautiful video that you made uh, about your dad. Thank you. You know, the, uh, us dads, we get pretty touched <laughs> by stuff like that. And uh, I am thrilled uh, that all of you are with us for our first ever White House Student Film Festival. Um, and I know uh, we're running a little bit late. It's not because the projector was not working. It was because of me. Uh, but I appreciate all of you guys being here and your patience. Uh, the Academy Awards are not until Sunday, uh, but as you can see, we brought uh, the Oscars to the White House a little bit early. Uh, and I want to thank our partners, Fox, National Geographic, and the American Film Institute. Uh, we've got the red carpet, we've got the big screens, the opening monologue. Uh, the only difference is nobody asks what you're wearing. Uh, and we've got Bill Nye, the science guy, and Neil deGrasse Tyson uh, uh, from the uh, Hayden Planetarium. Who might even give you a sneak peek of his new show, Cosmos, uh, if everybody behaves themselves. Uh, and uh, I, I saw the original version. Uh, I'm a little older than all of you. Uh, and it was spectacular and wonderful. And I know this is going to be uh, not just uh, as good, but, but even better. And, and so we're thrilled with that. And we're pretty, putting on a big show here because uh, we're honoring some remarkable filmmakers. Uh, I've said before, I, I believe, and I hope all of us believe, that every child in America deserves a world-class education, uh, especially in science and technology and engineering and math, uh, because it's skills like these that made us an economic superpower and built our middle class. Uh, we also need folks who are studying the arts because our film industry is a a huge generator uh, of jobs and, and uh, economic power uh, here in the United States. And it tells us our story and helps uh, us to find what's uh, our common humanity. Uh, and it's skills like these that allowed NASA to announce the other day that we've discovered more than 700 new planets. Um, that's cool. I mean, we didn't make the planets, but we we found out that they were there. Uh, and uh, one of the ways that we deliver the best education in the world is by empowering our students with the best technology in the world. Uh, to help inspire us, we invited students from across the country to send their videos uh, about how their schools use technology today, how they might use it in the future. Uh, so kids got, to, uh, got their cameras out and they went to work. And we received uh, about 2,500 videos. 2,500, and we watched them all. I did not personally watch them all, but the White House watched them all. And today, the Oscar goes to all of you. Because among all the incredible videos we received, yours stood out. Uh, and in my official capacity as president, let me just say these movies are awesome. Uh, like all great movies, yours do something special. They tell a story. Uh, they help us understand, in this case, uh, the amazing things that are going on in classrooms and how technology is empowering our students and broadening their imaginations and challenging them to uh, dream bigger and, and reach further. Now, uh, here is the spoiler alert. Uh, uh, there is some wonderful stuff going on out there. Uh, so even before you have seen some of these films, you need to know uh, that uh, what, what these filmmakers have displayed is the incredible innovation and creativity uh, of this generation coming up. Uh, you've got Gabriel uh, uh, Nafee and Miles uh, Pilchik from Science Tech Kids in New York. <laughs> hey. They showed us that their class isn't just dream dreaming about going into space, they're actually going into space. Uh, they designed density experiments and used a 3D printer to build tin tiny satellites to hold them. Uh, and then uh, they actually launched uh, a giant balloon that carried their satellites up to the edge of space. Very cool. Uh, <laughs> so they could collect the data. Uh, 
When I was in elementary school, I was not launching satellites into space. Um, you've got Alex Emerson, uh, who's, who, who showed us how his, sixth, uh, his eighth grade class at uh, Brookwood School in Massachusetts changed the definition of pen pals by video chatting with students in Uganda. Uh, and one of the things they did was collaborate on cook stoves that help families in rural areas cook safer and with cleaner energy. Uh, and it doesn't stop with what's possible today. Uh, these videos show how students are imagining the future. Classrooms that are fully accessible to classmates uh, with disabilities, individualized learning platforms that you can carry around in your pocket, uh, and that's the kind of creativity and imagination we want all of our young people to embrace. We cannot wait to see uh, more of that innovative spirit later uh, this year when we host our first ever White House Maker Fair. Uh, we've, we've already, we, we already have a White House Science Fair. This new event is going to highlight how Americans, young and old, tinkerers and inventors are imagining and designing and building tools and machines that will open our minds and power our economy. We want to bring this spirit, uh, including more technology, into the classroom. And that's why I launched something we're calling Connect Ed, our initiative to close the technology gap in our schools and connect 99% of America's students to high-speed broadband internet within five years. Because when the average American school has about the, the same internet bandwidth as the average American home, but serves 200 times as many people, uh, that means our students are at a disadvantage. And when less than 30% of our students have access to true high-speed internet in their classroom, while in South Korea students have 100%, uh, that's like waving the white flag when it comes to our global competition. Um, but here's what I think. In a country uh, where we expect free Wi-Fi at our coffee shops, then we should demand it in our schools and in our libraries. So, This is not something we can do alone. Uh, and as a consequence, I picked up the phone and started asking business leaders to help bring our schools and libraries into the 21st century. They did not just answer the call, they came up huge. So earlier this month, some of our biggest technology companies committed to more than $750 million in computers and software and broadband access to put our kids in classrooms on the cutting edge of technology. Uh, today, I'm proud to announce that more companies are getting on board. Uh, Prezi will provide over $100 million in presentation products to help students develop ready-to-work skills uh, in slideshows and creative communications. So give them a big round of applause. We're very proud of them for that. And Adobe will make available for free more than $300 million in creating uh, creative and teaching software so that kids can turn their ideas into films and graphics, and teachers can deliver lessons electronically. So give Adobe a big round of applause. Proud of Thank you. If you're quick at math, which I know you are, uh, then you'll see that this means we've delivered over $1 billion in technology commitments to our schools, which isn't too shabby for one month. But there's still more to do, and we need even more companies to get on board. Because thanks to innovative schools and teachers and students like all of you, we know what school might look like in the century ahead. Classrooms wired to space, and students who are fluid in coding and web design, and teachers uh, collaborating on projects with peers around the world. We've always imagined giving every child to the chance to learn like that. Uh, and with these private sector partners, we're helping to make it a reality. So let me leave you with a wonderful example of the difference that technology can make. Uh, Kyle Weintraub is a seventh grader at uh, David uh, Posnick uh, Jewish Day School in Florida. And last year, he was diagnosed with lymphoma, had to move to Pennsylvania for treatment. In the past, that meant Kyle would have had to leave his school and his friends behind. But every day, Kyle puts on his school uniform, and without even leaving his room in Pennsylvania, he goes to school in Florida, because he has a special robot with a high-tech video feed that goes to class for him. Um, and even as he's getting medical treatment uh, and fights to get better, Kyle can keep up with his studies 
controlling his robot from his computer at home. And through a video feed, Kyle can see his classmates, they can see him. So the robot doesn't just have a name, they just say, hey Kyle. And he can look around the classroom, move down the hallways, even sit with his friends at lunch. Uh, and I know the teachers uh, think this is just extraordinary as well because if there's one thing you don't want to do uh, is uh, start a food fight with a robot. And so, <laughs> so every, everybody kind of seems to be better behaved uh, when Kyle's robot's uh, around. Kyle is here today. He did not bring his robot, but everybody uh, give Kyle a big round of applause. Kyle's story is just one example of what's possible when we put our extraordinary technologies to work for our students uh, and our schools. And that's what this film festival is about. So to all the young filmmakers out there, uh, remember, uh, you are much better at this than all the adults. Uh, it's your imagination and your creativity and your innovation and your dreams that are going to help this country uh, move forward. Uh, keep up the great work. We could not be prouder of you. Your parents are proud of you, I know that, but uh, I am too. Uh, and America's counting on you. So with that, let's start the show. All right? Thank you, guys.